Now we're going to talk about who the hell is Zola and why do we care? Yeah, um, she really seemed to be the okay the normal human thrown into this super world, this uh, the the gods and goddesses uh, and, and superheroes, and that that archetype of character really makes me crazy, and, in, and not just in comic books and TV shows and movies too, like. Uh, uh, for instance, in Torchwood, uh, Gwen from Torchwood is that same sort of normal human thrown into this crazy world, um, saying, "Hey, like, what's going on?" Trying to make a relatable character for the reader uh, coming into it, and uh, it's—I mean, she wasn't as bad as most. Um, she's not saying this can't be real every other page. Um, so I, it kind of annoyed me, um, just that that type of character, but. Really, she's getting along pretty well. She seems to fit into the storyline, giving Wonder Woman a uh, raison d'etre. That's I. I like that she gives the story scale, where we already we always have Wonder Woman. It's like oh, like oh my god, like Wonder Woman is like she has to deal with gods, and that's so huge. And it's cool that we already have like that's the normal sense of scale, sense of scale status quo in the Wonder Woman mythos, and to then have a human also following her around at all times who's already, like, blown away by shit on Wonder Woman's level, and then when gods come into the mix, it's like, oh, my God! You know what? I, like, I don't like Zola. I didn't get Zola. You could have written that whole story without Zola, and it would have played out just fine as well. Just start off with Strife coming to the island being like, what up, Wonder Woman? You're my sister. And then, the, like, everything goes pretty much the same, except you don't have Wonder Woman saving this little white girl every five seconds in the books because someone's trying to stab her with something. Well, I think it's also, uh, going back to what we were talking about earlier, where characters like Superman and Wonder Woman are meant to represent this sort of heroic ideal, I think a lot of the value of having Zola in the story is that we get to see the impact Wonder Woman has on normal people, where instead of just being an isolated story about, like, Wonder Woman's happy fun time adventures, we are seeing that, like, the impact that Wonder Woman's, like, legacy and her legend is having on a normal woman and what a normal woman feels like when they're brought into this world. That's possible, but on, on Mike's side, what if you replace Zola with a flower pot? How would that really change the story? I don't think uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't in the context of this six-issue arc, but I think in the context of the long game story, which still has not fully played out, that Zeke, the baby who is eventually born, is going to be important in some way. But it's true that the real, the real uh, inciting incident, I guess, for this story is not so much. Zola's the fact that Zola's had sex with Zeus as the fact that you could have instead had Hippolyta just having sex with Zeus. That's bad enough because Hera's already mad about that. But it sort of, it sort of shows that the fact that Zola is there shows that Hera is willing to kill off everybody who has sex with Zeus and all of their children. So that that seems like a full time job, and not only that, a job with good <laughs> job security. You've got job security. <laughs> Listen, so, I want to go back to this pregnant flower pot idea because I, <laughs> no, no, I'm, no, no. I no. want to know about the how does this work? How do you actually impregnate a flower pot? We will explain <laughs> the birds and the bees to you later. Yeah. <laughs> the birds and the <laughs> bees and the flower way. pot. Yes, birds, bees, flowers. Uh, but Billy, I think you actually had something you wanted to talk about. Yeah. Uh, just. Um, Go ahead. I, I even uh, even I I really liked uh, Zola even as a character. I think there's an, a moment I really really liked in issue number two, uh, the moment where she's talking about all of the possible people. Hermes says that like oh so like did Zeus have to like pretend to be a peacock or like some crazy like how did he seduce you? What was your wildest fantasy? And she's just like I could have been a truck driver, could have been uh, a guy I met who was in a band. And Hermes is like, oh, wow, like, you really get around. And she, I think in a lot of Wonder Woman comics, uh, it, there's this very unfortunate thing where sex with men is seen as kind of, like, degrading and shameful. And, like, there's a story in the 90s George Perez one where, where Hippolyta is, like, raped by Hercules, and it's horrible. 
Um, but instead of this being a like, oh, like Zeus is taking advantage of these these poor dumb bitches who don't re like don't understand. Uh, they just uh, instead she says like, yeah, I like having sex with men. I'm not gonna apologize for that. Uh, it's like a personal thing for her. It doesn't feel like she was used in any way. She's a character with her own sexual agency, and that's not something that you see a lot. No, that was really refreshing because she's just like, yeah. I love dudes. I got railroaded like the end. I really like that. Um, that it doesn't well shame her. Going. And uh, you know what? With the, with the new 52, I've noticed that they've tried to do a lot more of that with Starfire and Catwoman, for instance. Although the internet explosions on people's opinions is all slut, 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 slut. When Starfire in, uh, uh, what was the book? The wasn't the outside. Uh, it's, it's Red Hood and the Outlaws. I feel like... Yeah. I didn't like those portrayals as much because I I don't think the problem with both of those series is that Starfire and Catwoman are being sluts, which is not, a, which is, I, again, and without even getting into the word, fact that the word slut isn't a word that I think we should use, but, but, yeah, but we're talking about it in the context of internet conversations. I feel like the problem with those portrayals was that in this case, Zola, it, she's just like a normal woman with a life, and that's like, that's what she, that's like something that she does for fun. But her sexuality doesn't define her as a character, whereas it seems like Starfire and Catwoman, instead of just the, like the fact that they have sex is an incidental thing to them, it almost be, I feel dirty reading those stories, like they're being pimped out by the writer who's like, like yeah, you like orange boobs, dude. I know you like orange <laughs> boobs. It's strange though the way, that, especially in this series, uh, Wonder Woman is kind of asexual, like. They they play up her relationship with Superman, but in this series, like even beyond this storyline, Wonder Woman is not really interested in anybody. She's just out for herself, and that's a good thing if you don't want to get hung up. Like if you are a fan of Wonder Woman who doesn't want to get hung up in soap opera crud, you can read this book and see a woman kicking butt, and that's what Wonder Woman does in this book. She's not defined by her sexuality she's kind of defined by her lack of sexuality which is both good and bad because some people are sexual and they still uh they still introduce elements like that another one that i really liked was uh was going back to hippolyta when they talk about hippolyta's affair with zeus like the original like hippolyta and men story is like people are t is hippolyta is the queen of the motherfucking amazons like one of the most powerful women in the world and they always have, but then a, a strong man had his way with her, and she's they like kind of turn her into a damsel in distress a lot of the time. But when we see her having sex with Zeus, she they there it was like showing her monologue about it, where like she gets on top, she's taking control. Like the appeal she's of like, that relationship with her is that yeah, is that she was like the dominant one in that relationship, and it was like a power dynamic that she was. Where, like, she was getting hers. It wasn't her being taken advantage of. That was, like, war rage sex. She was like, let's fight and let's fuck. <laughs> it's also interesting that, uh, I don't think it was in this arc, but later they reveal that the Amazons exist, or the Amazons procreate by going out and attacking and raping sailors and then throwing the male babies mm. into the sea. What? <laughs> what? But okay. Is I that know. where Aquaman's group gets like oh. populated from? <laughs> oh, like, hey, look, babies floating <laughs> in the ocean. We'll like save the up. That they you're, the, are, you're going to hell, Mike. I Damn. like the fact that they have sex rather than just being like eternally women who just exist on this island who came from nowhere as Amazons. They have some kind of lineage, even though I, it's kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a false problem. I, did, I laughed so hard when Hera described Paradise Island as a cockless coop. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, a bit, that's a bit on the nose. Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, there was a, another moment that I really liked was in the sixth issue. There's a point where they're talking about uh, I think it's it's Wonder Woman and Hades. I think they're talking about Hera, and Hades is like she's like she's a queen who's lost her king. She's worthless now. And 
Wonder Woman, her response to that is, and that, that's also that's always another thing that's like very common in comic books is, uh, is like what like these female characters who are kind of useless without their male counterparts. And Wonder Woman's response to that is, a queen without a king means she has nothing to lose. So she is only more dangerous and terrifying now than she has ever been before. She's off the chain now. I would like to agree with you, but I, I unfortunately cannot. Uh, your entire point is invalidated, Billy. Uh, you're drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon. I'm sorry. It's cheap. <laughs> <I'm broke. laughs> your point is invalid because you can't just let people be happy, Jamie. <laughs> I think you're the one with the problem here. Yeah. I'm happy. Well, one last thing I want to say about this series, and this is more a question about Greek mythology in general, but they talk about, okay, so uh, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades divided up the entire world, and the three parts they divided it into were the skies, the oceans, and the underworld, and that's the whole series they're talking about, like, but Zeus has the skies, the best of the deal, I'm stuck with the water. Who, why, why, why does none of them have land? Whose decision was that? That nobody, like, why, it seems like they all have this shitty part of the deal. I don't understand that. That's all I wanted to say. That feels Man. like a ridiculous Man. thing about Greek mythology. If, if it made sense, it would probably still be around, wouldn't it? Yeah, fair enough. So I, I have one question for our subscribers. How do we like Brian Azzarello's treatment of the Wonder Woman character so far, and do we think it's going to improve over previous incarnations of the character? Let us know in the comments below. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere. I have a question for our subscribers. How do you feel about sex with flower pots? <laughs> flower pots and sex is a bad combination. Something you don't want to get into. Kids... Say no to flower pots. Do we have? Am I am I under the impression now we're gonna have a PSA with every episode? Uh, that was not a PSA. I don't do PSAs. <laughs> that, was that was a just, warning. He's coming a, for you. Warning. That wasn't a warning. That was a promise. Flower pots are mine. Stay away from them. <laughs>